Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Sunandini and I'll be the host for tonight. Today, the objective is very simple. We are going to drill deeper into Great Lakes College and know everything about the college from two of our very special guests. Why we are doing this? So that every MB aspirant watching is aware of Great Lakes Preschool and what it can provide you and if you are the right fit for each other. Please welcome with me Dr. Suresh Ramanathan, who leads the Great Lakes as the Dean and is an eminent professor of marketing and consumer behavior. He has extensive global experience as faculty at the world's top-ranked booth School of Business, University of Chicago and Mays Business School, Texas. He has a PhD from NYU Stern School of Business and MBA from IIM Calcutta and a BTEC from IIT Delhi. And also with me, I have Mr. Gautam uh, Lakam Raju, who is the COO and also leads the overall admissions and marketing activities at Great Lakes. As a co he is also a co-founder of Great Lakes Gurgaon camp Campus and as a part of senior management team. He has been an instrumental in the growth of the institution over the last decade. Previously, he was a management consultant at a leading advisory firm in the energy practice. He did his MBA from MDI Gurgaon and a BTEC from DA IICT Gandhinagar. If our viewers have any questions, just leave it or uh, just text it on the live chat. Also, while the registration forms went off, you are, guys also asked uh, several questions that we'll take up after I finish off with my questions. So please just continuously be active on the live chat. So I hope you guys are ready, sir. So should I start with my questions? Yes, thank you, Sunandini. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, sir. Thank you. So the first question is, um, every B school has a USP, be it having great alums, placements, deep industry networks, etc. So, can you just uh, name the top five things that makes Great Lake unique? And maybe Dr. Suresh can take this up. Sure. Uh, thank you, Sunandini, for that question. And it's a it's a great question to begin with because it certainly helps us highlight why we believe we are unique, why we are different, why we offer something to students that uh, many other schools may not. OK, and I think that's important to situate it because I think there are choices, uh, you know, all all students here, all the prospective uh, MBA students uh, know that there are plenty of options available out there in the market. And it is, it is important for us to kind of highlight, you know, what is unique about us. So I think um, let me let me start by uh, placing kind of a big picture view of who we are as an institution, why we think we are different. And I think one of the fundamental characteristics of this institute is that we are very, very agile and innovative, which means we do not hesitate to uh, to make changes, to incorporate what is uh, most relevant, what industry is looking for, uh, what the alumni tell us. We are constantly seeking feedback and trying to basically uh, you know, look at how our curriculum could be improved, what are the new things that we need to uh, you know, include in the curriculum, uh, and not just in terms of courses, but also in terms of other experiential components that might actually enhance the quality of learning at the, at the institution, right? So our agility and innovativeness, I would say, are uh, number one. One uh, very important thing that I can talk about is that we were basically the first institute in the country, first business school in this country to introduce an analytics major in, uh, in our program, which means it's a full-fledged uh, major, including like eight different courses in analytics, which uh, you know now comprise of things like AI, ML, and uh, you know blockchain and all of these things, which are actually part of our curriculum. Right. And so you can imagine that today we are talking about chat GPT and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. DALI and all these things. These are things were conversations that were being had, you know, several years ago when we had actually introduced it as part of our curriculum. Right. So therefore, mm -hmm. uh, we pride ourselves on being ahead of the curve in terms of the innovations that we have actually introduced and everyone else is basically a follower. OK, so that's, I think, mm -hmm. one thing that makes us distinctive. The second thing I would argue that makes us distinctive is that we are also very, very focused on what we call social engagement. Okay, so social engagement is the idea that we are not simply focused on selfish goals or, you know, just about ourselves, but also making a difference to society. And therefore, one of the major things that we started off very, very early, like, you know, uh, 
pretty much as soon as we shifted to our new campus is uh, a program called karma yoga which is one of a kind program we have adopted 27 different villages around campus and our students go there spend you know one day every week uh, you know at these villages speaking to the villagers working on projects related to healthcare financial literacy uh, you know educating children women all of that right helping women basically succeed in terms of starting something entrepreneurial there's a bunch of things that they do so that's i think i would say a second big thing that you know uh, that is very different about what we do because many other schools may have social programs but the kind of rigor that we have it is very much part of our curriculum and what we have put in into this is is far far more comprehensive and and many of our students almost i would say half our students continue with the program even after the actual requirement in terms of coursework is completed which means purely on a voluntary basis they want to continue being involved with the villages and helping those uh, you know those uh, uh, tribals and all of that right not even knowing the language so you can imagine that this is something that they are very passionate about and that comes through very very clearly right and that's that makes a big difference uh the third aspect that i want to touch upon is the kind of faculty that we have i mean our faculty are second to none in fact i would say we pride ourselves on having faculty who are absolutely exceptional uh you know and you know you can talk to any of our Uh, people listening here can talk to any of our current students and find out what they think about our faculty i mean they are outstanding many of whom come from industry with like 20 plus 25 plus years of experience so they're bringing a lot of that experience into the classroom we have we have always been a school that has been founded on the idea of uh, global mindset indian roots which means that we are incorporating the global mindset all the time uh, we have faculty from institutions such as stanford from kellogg from uh, yale uh, you know all these different uh, places they actually come and spend time in the classroom with our students so uh, we have been one of the f- first schools to incorporate a global faculty model which means our students benefit from knowledge that is not just india focused but actually something that is global okay so that is a third dimension that i would highlight as an area that uh, you know that we we pride ourselves on the fourth is we were one of the in fact possibly the first program if not the first but one of the first to introduce a one year program mm-hmm. uh, which is called the postgraduate program in management pgpm as it's called and so we basically figured out that there are people who have about 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 years of experience people with experience who really want an accelerated mba which with the same level of rigor that you might have in a two year program but with much more uh, with a compressed timeline uh, and that would help them basically maximize the opportunity cost of time right so there is a time value of money as we say or the money value of time as our founder dr bala used to say there is a money value of time right every month every day every hour that you spend extra not being employed is basically money that you are not earning and therefore if you are able to get all the same education that you would get in a two year program but in one year and you can graduate one year earlier and take up a job and be earning 3x 4x 5x you know you are in in a great shape right you you would actually be able to uh, hit the road running and the final fifth thing that i want to talk about and this we take a lot of pride in is the fact that we have a one of a kind campus it is southeast asia's or south asia or southeast asia's first leap platinum green campus which means it has received the highest level of certification in terms of its eco friendliness it's a beautiful campus the overall experience is amazing and our you know all the students who join us just love the ambiance it is almost like you know an oasis in the middle of a concrete jungle so you can just think about what you get to experience on the campus it's a 30 acre campus in chennai and similarly in gurgaon we have a beautiful campus so this is all part of the overall experience so that's what i would say are distinctive about us 
I found many great points and this was a very good and broad explanation of the whole campus. And I love the contrast between you are teaching AIs and then you're also taking students to rural places and interacting there. Yes. That's a lovely contrast. So now I just, from a perspective of a normal MBA kid, we always have specializations like marketing, uh, consulting, finance. Yeah. So here you also have incorporated analytics as one of the major co programs. So right. I wanted to understand what are the different specializations and courses that uh, Great Lakes has. Yeah. So, you know, when we say analytics, I think there is what one might call functional knowledge of analytics, which means, mm -hmm. you know, you can dig, drill deep and getting into getting into natural language processing, deep learning mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, all those things, right? So you're going to, you know, learn all those courses. But combined with that, you know, if you intend, for example, to uh, get deep into marketing analytics, so you would need to know marketing metrics. You would need to know, you know, some of the latest ways of, you know, pricing, uh, uh, you know, how to price a product, right? And there is a lot of analytics that goes into pricing a product. Uh, there is things on web and social media analytics that you need to know. Right. So there's a lot of courses that kind of take the knowledge that you have learned in the analytics, uh, you know, the specialization, but apply it in the functional area that you are interested in. Right. So in marketing, you may have this in finance. You may have a, a bunch of things in supply chain. You may have a bunch of courses. So what we are basically trying to do is marry the expertise that you're gaining in terms of the the skills deep learning, machine learning, whatever, right? Uh, you know, all of that, but combining it with the functional area so that you're actually getting, uh, you know, to apply what you're learning. Good. So next, I think we should move forward towards maybe the placements and see the curriculum and the pedagogy yes. of this. So maybe Gautam sir and Suresh sir both can combine your answers sure. as whoever wants to answer these. So um, if we could get, get a quick walkthrough of the placement stats, like the average CTC and the number of students who are offered uh, placement. So can you just give us a trend yeah. for the next three years or something like that? Got them. Yeah. So um, uh, thank you, Sanandmi. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to share that we have two programs, uh, two full-time mm -hmm. programs. Dr. Suresh already mentioned about mm -hmm. the one-year program, the first of, uh, or one of the first of its kind in the country. Uh, right, uh, which was designed to give an incredible value proposition to people with experience. Most of the two-year programs are designed for freshers, um, right? So, so this was unique in that uh, sense. And second, uh, we also have a two-year program, which essentially caters to students who have either uh, zero experience or up to three years of experience, right? So these are the two different programs and accordingly, based on the experience, the placements also differ a bit. Right, and I'll come to that uh, in detail. Um, so, one for the one-year program, I think it's been offered since 2004. Every single year, we had like 100% placements. Uh, same with the two-year program as well. So, that's not a question, um, right? But what is more relevant is the value proposition, right? Um, um, because in in any good school, I'd say not just Great Lakes, any of the top schools, I think it can be taken for granted that you get a job. But I think uh, what's more important is the kind of uh, uh, learning that you have and the kind of long-term growth you'll have, right? Mm -hmm. So, so in the one-year program, people come in, um, you know, sometime in, uh, uh, let's say, earlier it used to be May, thanks to the pandemic, it got shifted by a couple of months, so let's say June or July. And, you know, most of the batch, even in the pandemic years, last couple of years, the batch got placed by December, right? So within six, seven months, uh, you know, most of them got placed. And, you know, in, in one year, they're back in the industry with almost, I think last two years, it was 3x of their incoming salary on an average, right? So if you typically look at somebody with a three, three and a half years experience in the industry, in most companies, let's say IT and all, people would be at five, six lakhs, right? Average salaries. Um, and now PGPM, the average outgoing salary post MBA has been about 18, right? So 3x in one year. And I think that's that's an incredible value proposition. Uh, in terms of the return on investment. But even compared to a two-year program, the other benefit is that you're not only graduating one year before, uh, but and, and you know with a great outcome, but you're also getting one year of post-MBA experience in the same time frame, right? So whereas somebody is sitting for two years in a campus, you are out there in the industry gaining valuable post-MBA experience. That's what is going to lead to further growth, right? 
so 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 that's that's a great value proposition it's been very consistent last year i think our average salaries since you asked about the trend the average salaries increased by almost 31% that's in 2022 over 2021 and uh, this year i think there is a, a smaller increase there's a small increase uh, this year also we are not yet out with the placement report um, so i think this year's placements will talk more after the reports are out but i think we had a uh, i think qualitatively we had a much more diverse set of companies this year um, in very interesting roles uh, from product management to consulting um, and and to um, you know tech roles right so so we had fairly uh, a diverse set of recruiters coming for uh, different kinds of profiles so i think that's an important development this year you know pgdm as well as i said uh, it's been uh, growing significantly every year every year both in terms of the quality of the students um, you know the number of applications and also in terms of the placement outcomes so i think there also again we have a very significant increase this year in terms of um, you know the salaries but again uh, in terms of the recruiters that program is attracting you know great companies in every single industry right whether it's fmcg banking uh, and financial services or consulting uh, take the uh, any top brand in consulting and they'll be coming to great lakes whether it's um, you know uh, mckinsey bain uh, accenture accent strategy uh, ey pwc Delo. so all of them are recruiters right so that just gives you a sense of uh, who are recruiting of course a one year program you have more of consulting roles because people have higher experience and you know those kind of companies prefer people with experience whereas let's say fmcg and uh, such companies bfsi they prefer you know typically freshers to go through their management uh, training kind of roles so slight differences between the programs um, um, but again the salaries are again commensurate with the kind of experience they bring in i ha i have one more thing to add to this uh and uh everybody's again like i said everybody is talking about chat gpt and and uh, you know open ai and and all of this okay uh you have to think about where tomorrow's jobs are right where are tomorrow's jobs are the jobs that you have today uh you know are they even going to be relevant okay and you should be thinking of a school where Things like, you know, AI and ML and all of that have actually been an integral part of the curriculum for years, right? Where, you know, it is part of our culture to actually embrace this and say that, you know, we need to bring all of that in into, into our curriculum. And therefore, think about the jobs tomorrow, not the job that you get today, right? Five years from now, uh, the position that you have, the career that you will have really depends on the preparation that you have today. Hmm. And on that note, I had a question regarding this that, you know, before we had those traditional sectors coming up or industries, now, now uh, fintech is more popular. Did you see e-commerce brand, then gaming is going more popular. So I wanted to understand from your placement perspective, is there a shift in the people or the companies who are coming, the industries that are coming right now compared to maybe in 2004 when you started the first year, one year program? Okay, yeah. But Gautam, you can address that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, you know, obviously the times have changed and the companies mm -hmm. uh, have changed. Some of the companies have changed, but what also has changed is, you know, companies themselves have changed and they're hiring in new roles, right? Thank Even you. if it's the same company, they're hiring in very different roles, right? Let's say, you know, an Accenture was hiring in maybe operations or um, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, operational consulting or strategy consulting a few years back. Now, they'd also want to hire in very, um, you know, let's say focused uh, applied areas, right? They're mm -hmm. very specific, let's say, um, you know, in analytics and different areas, right? Yeah. Because that's all pervasive. Everybody, every industry has uh, changed the way they work, right? Now things are driven by data, um, right? And, and everybody wants to leverage mm -hmm. that, right? Across industries, across functions, right? Whether it's marketing, even HR has HR analytics. Right. right. So, so, so the companies, I think some of them have been there. Uh, there, some companies have been there since at mm -hmm. least I know, uh, for almost 12 years, every single year. Um, uh, right. Some recruiters like an Accenture or a Deloitte, they're large recruiters that are there every year. But, um, on the way, we got a lot of new companies, uh, coming in as the bats has also grew over a period of time. So I think now we have a lot more companies and it's a, and also, as I said, 
this year especially we have a much higher diversity of companies right and and uh, not just one industry but they represent like uh, uh, you know um, industries from across the board and similarly our students also come from very very different backgrounds we have in the classroom somebody who is a um, doctor lawyer journalist architect um, right architects couple of architects uh, you know and you have somebody who said a naval pilot um, right oh. so 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 you can have all kinds of students so accordingly you know companies also uh, would be interested in this kind of diverse um, you know uh, students that they can look at Good. So, Dr. Suresh was talking about how the curriculum changes and Great Lakes has always been sort of a first comer in many uh, situations, like the first year program or getting into analytics. So, uh, sir also mentioned that the curriculum is refined as per the changes or the futuristic whatever vision that you guys have. So, can you just in a practical sense how the curriculum is refined as per students uh, to get ready for different different roles? So, like, how does that work exactly? So, I'll share with you the, uh, you know, the way we think about this, right? So, mm -hmm. at all times, we are seeking inputs from our alumni as the kind of what we would call the first listening post, right? Our alumni are our, uh, you know, eyes and ears, right? They they kind of mm -hmm. tell us what's going on, what our company is really looking for, what skills are required and so on. So our alumni are a very important sounding board. We have, uh, you know, I have something called the Dean's Advisory Board, which is a group of about uh, uh, 12 or 13 different members from, from industry, very senior people, uh, you know, from industry who actually sit on the board and uh, basically tell me, yeah, you know, this is really what's happening. What are the overall industry dynamics? And uh, so, you know, I get input from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have my, uh, the, my head of placements sitting together with my program directors and my area chairs on uh, our curriculum committee. Uh, my placements director basically gives me feedback on what the recruiters are saying. Mm. Okay. My program directors and the area chairs will then say, okay, you know, this is what we need to do. These are some of the ideas that we have. And we go back and forth on this till we come up with ideas on what needs to, uh, needs to happen. And we have these meetings periodically and we are constantly reevaluating what's ne what needs to be done. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the one thing that we always say is that let us not take anything as cast in stone. Right. Question everything, question every assumption that you make about what is required and, and then go back and say, okay, you know, if we were to do this completely differently, what would we do? And so that, that is the spirit of innovation, right? And that's exactly what we kind of embrace here. So in fact, uh, just some time back, we were in a meeting and we were actually discussing about the next year, um, right? Not the incoming batch, but 2024, 25. Uh, what we'd like to do in terms of, you know, looking at any possible changes, right? I'll also give one more example, right? Uh, we talked about analytics. Um, we had courses in internet business and so on. Um, you know, we introduced a specialization called uh, digital strategy um, in Gurgaon, right? Uh, again, on an experimental uh, basis last year. And, you know, it was so successful that I think almost uh, two-thirds of the students actually opted for that as a majors, not marketing, not finance, not operations, right? So clearly, it's well thought out. Our students could see the value mm -hmm. in it, right? And again, two days back, we were again debating um, whether digital strategies are right thing and somebody proposed that um, we should look at what the skills we need, how students need in the future as, is actually digital dexterity, right? Mm -hmm. The ability to adapt, right? It's mm -hmm. not one strategy, but you have to continuously adapt, right? So, so it's this continuously looking for what is needed in the future, right? Not everybody does that because change is actually very hard. Yes. And most academic institutions are not the nimblest of organizations, right? Uh, these are all slow moving um, organizations with a long history, but uh, mm -hmm. we are now a fairly mature organization. We are 15, 17 years old, uh, but still mm -hmm. we try to, you know, think like a young startup, right? So that's that's where the mm -hmm. difference comes. And, and I don't think that too many schools um, you know, which are of this age, um, which have been as successful uh, in that kind of time frame, right? Um, uh, so, so I think, as Dr. Suresh said at the very beginning, um, 
we try to be innovative we are always you know listening to people right hearing their ideas and we ourselves questioning ourselves what we do and that's how um, i think we are able to respond let's say faster than most yeah love the futuristic approach of the school uh, but like now moving forward we have known the overall um, the overview of the great lakes college and then we moved into programs now every student is very curious about the roi of this uh, whole course so what we want to know is there are two programs as you said so maybe you can uh, divide this and then let us know the costs that students have to bear maybe there are scholarships because i al- already got a question in regarding scholarship if there is a merit based scholarship that uh, great yeah. lakes provides so any scholarship and then maybe you already spoke about placement so combine sure, these sure. and sure so so uh, coming to our first program which is a one year mba right this is for people with 2 plus years mm-hmm. of experience uh, so the fees is about 21 lakhs um, right and uh, so the average salaries are about uh, you know 18 lakhs um, right mm-hmm. so and it's a one year program more importantly right so um, i think i think yeah. it's, uh, uh, it's it's it offers exceptional return on investment uh, if you look at it mm-hmm. because in the second year you are already earning as opposed to still being in the campus right, right? so so that allows you mm-hmm. to have a far higher return on investment and um, as i said so the appropriate metric would therefore be you earn 36 lakhs after two years, two years. yes okay mm-hmm. and pay 21 lakhs compared to you know going into a two year program mm-hmm. right and you know ending up with uh, you know whatever salary you get and paying you know the same amount of money or more yeah mm-hmm. yeah not just that in the second year you know most likely they'll have a in fact they will have a significant jump to get exactly. into a more granular yeah. level absolutely uh, right so so that's that's one um, right in terms mm-hmm. of uh, uh good salaries combined with low opportunity cost uh, ensure that it's got mm-hmm. a great op- a great uh, return on investment in our pgdm right which is for freshers our uh, mm-hmm. last year our fees was uh, i think around 19 lakhs um, right it's a two year program mm-hmm. now you may ask why is the fees higher for a one year program versus yeah. um you know lesser fees for a two year program it's also mm. the overall value proposition right it's it's a um uh, in a one year people are having actually a much better value proposition because there's a lesser opportunity cost right uh, mm. they are earning in the second year that's one aspect second is also in terms of the effort the institution puts in uh, mm. just because it's not it's it's one year doesn't mean that we teach less right mm. um, um in fact the best of our faculty teach in the program because they need to make the most of the time uh, in that mm. program um, right and and it's one roller coaster since the people come in uh, it's 11 months continuous no break so there's no decrease in the amount of teaching it's in fact it's a higher quality experience overall uh, because of mm. the maturity of the students their uh, real world experience so the learning experience is actually a lot more applied in the in the one year program right uh, the two year program um, you know obviously is for fresher so that gives them the time uh, to assimilate um, and and completely get ready for their you know uh, uh, management career um, uh, post the summer internship right so in the two year program our fees is 19 but uh, salaries uh, this year are going to be i think uh, about 14 and 1/2 lakhs um, right mm-hmm. uh, placement report is not out but i'm i'm giving you an approximate uh figure since all the students are uh, essentially placed um so and mm-hmm. we'll be releasing a report shortly so that's again for and most of the batch is freshers right some i think uh, mm-hmm. 70% of that batch is absolute freshers rest are having you know mostly less than a year or uh, two years of experience so for essentially that background students are able to get uh, excellent outcomes um uh, right with an average of about 14 and half so that again provides a great uh, return on investment hope that answers your question Yeah. Now one more thing uh, regarding scholarships and loans. Yes, yes. If we take loan, then how many years will it take to uh, pay back the loan? And if there are any scholarships? Yeah. So one, both these programs are AICT approved. Uh, both our mm-hmm. one year and the two year uh, programs. So that means that almost every single bank in this country would be, mm-hmm. you know, giving the loans. Mm-hmm. Second, um, Great Lakes is categorized as a tier one institution by most of these banks, whether it's mm-hmm. SBI. 
which is the largest bank in the country or uh, let's say Bank of Baroda and so on, apart from the private sector banks. So students get a fairly attractive rate, uh, rate of uh, uh, you know, interest rate, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that is what most students would finance their MBA with because at the end of the day, it's an investment, mm -hmm. right? In, in, the, in the next 30, 40 years of your career, right? Having said that, in terms of, I think, in how many years um, they can clear it. Typically, I think most people would take a, a loan with seven to 10 years of duration. They get a moratorium while they're studying and, and for a few mm -hmm. more months post the study till they get into their jobs. Right. And, and I think uh, that's that's a fairly comfortable time frame. Again, it depends on individual capacity. Mm -hmm. Right. If they want to accelerate, sometimes you get bonuses, yeah. you pay off. Um, mm -hmm. Right. But um, financing is not an issue. Uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. given the guaranteed, almost guaranteed kind of placements. So students uh, mm -hmm. don't have any risk as such. Coming to scholarships, we do have scholarships. In fact, uh, uh, we have about 40 scholarships of uh, um, you know, about five lakhs. Uh, um, these are diversity come merit scholarships that we offer to mm. students based on both these parameters, right? Um, uh, people mm. who come from underrepresented backgrounds, whether in terms of uh, underrepresented professional backgrounds, um, right? Or it could be in terms of uh, anything unique that they bring to the table, or it could be to uh, in, increase the gender ratio, right? It, it could be um, about any of this. That's one. That's the diversity part. And then obviously it's merit. And merit is based on, um, you know, the academic track record, professional achievements, um, performance in the interview and so on. And we already have the statement of purpose, the SS in the application form. So there is no mm -hmm. other separate application that's needed. We consider all of this and uh, take our decision. Uh, beyond this, we have instituted a few scholarship with 100% tuition fee waiver, um, right? These are named after our mm. founder, Dr. Bala Vibala Chandran. And uh, uh, these are for uh, people with exceptional merit, um, mm. right? Uh, with a fantastic uh, track record. So, so, so you know, they get a full tuition fee waiver. So hope that um, addresses. Yes. So I hope it answers your questions, whoever wrote the questions. Uh, next question is the one of the most important thing or the pointers of Great Lakes was the alumni network. So just wanted to, in a practical sense, if a aspirant wants to connect to his or her alum, so how does one do that in Great Lakes? So yes, I think we have a as you know we have a very al active alumni network. We have something like twelve thousand alumni in thirty plus countries. Uh, mm -hmm. So they are, you know, located everywhere. You know, you'll find uh, Great Lakes alumni in places as far off as Stockholm in Sweden. Mm. Uh, there are people in Australia. There are people in Dubai, Singapore, US, everywhere. Okay. And then, of course, in India, we have numerous chapters, uh, you know, all the major cities and uh, Pune and, you know, everywhere we have alumni. And uh, so it's a very active network. They are all very actively involved and actually want to give back to the institution in, mm. in a variety of ways. And one of the things that they certainly do is to, you know, they are willing to mentor our, uh, you know, uh, students and uh, they are willing to uh, help them, guide them. They are in, they, in fact, they get very actively involved during the uh, placement process, uh, mm -hmm. helping them in terms of uh, giving them feedback on how to uh, answer uh, questions, you know, getting coaching, uh, particularly, mm -hmm. you know, let's say uh, you have an interview with Accenture, you know, you may find an alumnus from, you know, who is currently in Accenture and, you know, helping you, you know, navigate all of that and, you know, saying, yeah, you know, what are the things you need to watch out for and, and those kinds of things. But to your broader question in terms of how can students reach out to our alumni, you know, we have an alumni office, uh, you know, which is actively engaged with uh, with the Institute and through them uh, or through LinkedIn or through informal groups. Uh, mm -hmm. There are many, many ways by which, uh, you know, uh, students can actually connect with the alumni. So we have a portal, uh, an alumni portal where mm -hmm. our alumni are all, you know, they are all there. And, uh, you know, the students may be able to reach out to them through that through that portal. But Gautam, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I'd say that the, you know, initial, I think, interaction may start uh, at admissions itself because a lot right. of the panelists in exactly. the interview process are also alumni, right? So, uh, you yeah. know, one can always go back and connect. And and these days, I think that's the easiest thing, right? You can always connect on LinkedIn, LinkedIn. right? You can look up alumni on company, based on company, based on region, um, hmm. right? So anywhere in the world, I think, uh, you want to connect uh, to any of the alumni, you can do that. 
right so 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 i think that's the easy part i think i think uh, i think what people need to do is actually take initiative correct right mm-hmm. they need to reach out right you can't expect that somebody is going to come and help me um, um right so that happens right as dr sudesh said during placements and all some of them take mock interviews some of them talk about their companies some of them come along with the recruiting team um, um right when they visit the campus right but i think what is required if you want to um, you know benefit from it benefit from the network is to take that initiative right and right. and reach out anybody is happy to help right uh, they have been in those shoes so uh, they will be always willing to guide get give good feedback um, so so take that initiative great so moving forward i'm going to ask the questions that were given in the registration forms so many students have asked many questions so i guess you are the best people to answer them and later on we will take up the live chat so guys if you have any questions continuously put it across we'll answer i can see many questions already popping up so we'll answer them right after this registration like so the first question is how can an average student who is not good at any section can be selected in at great lakes Gautam? Should, should I like rephrase? Uh, yeah, rephrase. Yeah, yeah. They are talking about cat. Okay, okay. So they are saying that they gave cat, but they didn't score too well in any of the sections. So is it mm-hmm. possible to still get through Great Lakes? Is there any other means they can yeah, improve on? So, so um, especially for our one-year program, since we are mm-hmm. looking at people with experience, right? Uh, we look at the overall profile, right, and the overall mm-hmm. application, which includes a statement of purpose. um you know uh, the work experience and so on right so so uh, so there i think the test scores are one of the parameters uh, they are not necessarily the most important parameter uh, we may be willing to look at people with slightly lesser uh, uh, you know score provided they have something interesting to bring to the table right in terms of uh, mm-hmm. how do they add to the uh, you know diversity of the class uh, what is the track record if they have an exceptional track record we may oversee a slightly lower score Got it. So there's a question that is uh, Ankit is asking. He's saying that he, uh, sir, I'm applying for Great Lakes through CMAT exam. So does this have the same weightage as CAT during admission process? Yeah. So um, I think I think I think it's uh, it's obviously not uh, clear to everybody's knowledge that you know both are not uh, similarly competitive. right mm. so while we do acts since we are an aict approved institution and cmat is administered by aict uh, we recognize that you know the level of competitiveness in both the exams are different so accordingly our metrics are also different um, mm. right um, you know a 99 percentile in cmat is not the same as 99 cat so we accordingly mm. moderate right and and selectively consider students got it So the next question is difference between the ROI of Chennai and Gurgaon campus. Okay, so um, first I think I'll talk more about the commonalities. I think I think uh, both are you know offering the one year and the two year programs, right? So the curriculum is very similar, um, mm-hmm. right? In fact, a lot of the faculty teach in both the campuses, um, right? And and uh, I think many of the recruiters are actually the same. right if you look at the largest recruiters whether mm. it's accenture deloitte and so on um they are actually common to both but yes there will be differences in terms of you know some companies preferring one campus the usually the smaller recruiters they prefer one campus because uh, they don't have that appetite of taking in uh, larger numbers and visiting multiple campuses right in terms mm. of the return on investment i think the uh, gurgaon campus uh, uh, you know last year um i think the average uh, salary was around uh, 15.9 for the pgpm mm-hmm. right and i think this year would be also slightly higher than that so again you know uh, similar proposition the fees is slightly lower right so so mm-hmm. your return on investment remains more or less the same got it the next question is how should i prepare for the interview of great lakes gautam yeah you so, you can come in and then i will come in Yeah, might want to take on it. Sure, right. So, I mean, uh, that can be a longer discussion, but I'll try to be brief, right? So, one, know yourself well, right? Hmm. The first question you typically get asked in most interviews, or at least what I ask, is tell me something interesting about yourself, 
right even if somebody doesn't say interesting try to make it interesting right because at the end of the day an interview is a sales experience mm. right you are trying to sell your candidate mm. right to the panel who are the, let's say your customers right mm. so so make it interesting no something that uh, talks about your capabilities right how did you demonstrate that in the past right what are your achievements right um, do you know what your strengths and weaknesses are right can you give examples for each of these right because mm -hmm. one is to say you know i'm good at abc what's a saying that you know i was good at something and this is what i did right so which is basically giving proof that you are actually good at something right not just claiming right because everybody can claim right you know give me a seat and i'm going to be a rock star right but it doesn't work that way you have to give proof of whatever you have done right so so that's one part right knowing about yourself and highlighting your strengths uh, second uh, you know be thorough about whatever you have done so far uh, right if you have been just a student talk about your academics and what your favorite at least you should be good at your favorite subject mm -hmm. right you can't say this is my favorite subject and say oh i forgotten because it's been 2 years right so so be thorough about whatever you have done and especially if you had work experience then you should be able to talk about your work not just at the granular level of this is what i used to do day to day but also the bigger picture right mm -hmm. the 500 feet view versus just the 50 feet view that is to know how your how your work had an impact on your organization your customers organization right the business impact so you are getting into a business program so start looking at the business impact of your work right so that's the second dimension third is in terms of you know your awareness of you know what's happening around right both in the um, you know um, um, world around and more specifically in terms of the business world right um, don't come to an interview and say you know i don't get time to read hmm. right well um, that's perfectly fine if you have no interest in business right but if you want to do an mba you need to demonstrate that you have some interest in the business world right so hmm. so um, that's a very important habit uh, not just for the interview but uh, to do well in your mba as well as in your career post mba because you you will be making decisions based on what is happening around if you don't keep track of that you are unlikely to be able to make uh, good decisions right unlike engineering where you know you look, um, there's a formula for everything uh, in the business world there you know hundreds or thousands of mm -hmm. variables right you can't predict exactly what will happen for that the more you know the better your perspective the better your decisions will be so keep reading uh, that's one important quality that almost all top ceos have right yeah. from people across diverse areas jeff bezos to elon musk to uh, warren buffet right mm -hmm. name the person uh, any business leader and he would have that as one of his core uh, habits so start building those habits and talk about what you know in the interview The next question is is great uh, actually i wanted to add a couple of things sure, uh, sure, sure. Sorry. right so yes, yes. um so this gets to gautam's points i think two two big points i wanted to make hmm. uh one is uh remember that you're going to be in a class of 300 to 400 other people who share a very very similar background okay hmm. many of them are going to be engineers many of them are going to come from top schools top institutions everywhere right so mm -hmm. there's nothing unique about you unless you are able to show that you are unique okay otherwise i'm just going to assume you're just another engineer you're uh, you're just another commerce graduate so what is so special about you make the case for me tell me why you are so different and why i should hire you you know recruit you to the program and equally that's exactly the same thing that you need to be ready for when you face the job interview i often like to say the analogy is that you are a potato in a sack of potatoes okay unless you show that you are a blue potato while everyone else is uh, is brown uh, you know you will not stand out hmm. okay so show how you are different what makes you so special always look for the things in your cv in your vita in you know in your background that you can basically highlight to anyone who asks you tell me something about yourself if you don't have the perfect answer to that question you're dead okay so that's number one that i wanted to uh, can you uh, is my video coming through yeah 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 
Okay. Uh, the second point I wanted to highlight, and this gets to Gautam's uh, point about reading. Uh, one of the biggest things that you can do uh, to benefit from all of this is curiosity. Develop curiosity. And curiosity is not just about reading the news. Curiosity is, is a more, it's, it's a much broader idea that you need to want to learn. And it's not necessarily wanting to learn something about your subject, but wanting to learn everything that is out there to learn. Develop the practice of, you know, reading about things that are, you know, not in your area of specialization. If you are an engineer, try to learn something about the arts, about music, about anything that, you know, that you can get excited about. Because the more you expand your horizons, your brain will expand. And then you will actually develop this idea that, you know, there is so much out there in the world that I didn't know. And that curiosity is the most important quality that anyone can have. Uh, just let me clarify because this is something that comes out very frequently in interviews. Um, don't say that you are reading news through news in shorts. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's you're reading headlines. Mm -hmm. Right? That doesn't make you think. That doesn't make you understand any about any topic in a, a, with a, with a deeper perspective. Right? So, so when you learn about something, try to ask questions, get into the depth of it. Right? Um, so that's when you actually understand. Yeah. Got it. So I'll carry forward with my questions. Yeah. So the next question is, is Great Lakes also good for marketing? According to some placement reports, only 5% of the roles were offered to sales and marketing. So is Glim only inclined towards technology or something like that? So let me, let me try and take a step back, right? Marketing today is not brand management. Hmm. Marketing today is retail analytics marketing today is you know uh, big data marketing is not limited to just you know advertising okay so anyone who is kind of thinking about marketing in such a limited way needs to understand that every single function has today been transformed by the advent of technology so technology touches us in every way you join a consulting company like accenture strategy or something like that or or mckinsey chances are that you will be actually working on marketing related problems but you know uh, for for a company right okay. you're you're consulting and you're doing marketing consulting you're you're crunching the data and producing insights so mm -hmm. marketing is not about you know just saying oh i'm going to be advertising you know that's not marketing so I want to disabuse everyone of this notion that marketing is advertising or about sales. It is not. Mm. Yeah. And I speak this as a marketing professor. So that's, let me say this straight up. So let me, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, give uh, a little more of uh, uh, background to this, why, you know, somebody mm. would ask that question. So we have two programs, as I said, the PGPM and PGDM. In the PGDM, if you see, there are plenty of the traditional marketing roles, right? Um, whether it's in BFSI, whether it's in FMCG, there are plenty. I think I, I think 30, 40% of the students get into like the traditional marketing roles in the PGTM, which is a typical program, right? Uh, it's, it's what uh, has been offered in India for uh, many decades now, right? Uh, because those are the companies which are looking for management training kind of roles. They have a summer internship based recruiting and all. Right. In, I think this question was related to PGPM, right, mm. um, which was our flagship program uh, since 2004. And there, if you look at it, uh, there are people with experience, right? And a and mm. lot of people come from backgrounds like engineering and post-engineering. They'll obviously get into like IT and all, right? That's where most of the jobs in India were uh, for the last at least couple of decades, right? Now, once you have these kind of backgrounds, obviously, you want to leverage that and get into uh, roles, you know, where... Uh, you can make use of your background, right? And similarly, companies want to hire people whose background uh, is something that they also can leverage, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's where a lot of the people go into consulting, right? These are all newer age roles where people are benefiting from their background in technology and getting into areas like product management, consulting, uh, uh, you know, uh, or operations and so on, right? In marketing also, there are plenty of roles, but there have been, let's say, many of them would be in B2B marketing. Hmm. Right. Um, let's say you are working in one of these consulting firms or, or tech, com tech companies. Tech companies have to sell as well. 
right? They all have like multi-million dollar clients, mm. right? But yeah, it's not like selling soap, right? Through advertising and promotions, right? It's it's right. selling through multi-million dollar, multi-year contracts, right? Mm. So that is also sales, right? In fact, I would argue that that's a higher quality of sales where you are dealing with something much, much more complex, right? Mm. And and in the process, actually, you know, uh, earning a lot of valuable foreign exchange for this country. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so just to say, you know, as Gautam said, you know, the ITCs and the Nestle's of the world come to campus and recruit, uh, you know, uh, you know, with us, right? And so they are the top most uh, FMCG companies that come to campus. But they recruit in our PGDM program for the simple reason that you know they are looking for people whom they can groom from management trainee level itself. Hmm. Whereas in our one-year program, these are mostly people, you know, who have a certain, you know, level of experience in in uh, in consult or in in IT or in uh, engineering and so on, and many of them are readily absorbed by uh, companies in the consulting space, but may be put into a function which is related to marketing. So you're still doing that job, hmm. except that you're not joining an FMCG company, which actually prefers to recruit freshers. So, so our alumni actually are in like many different companies Correct. and very senior marketing roles. Um, the head of marketing the, for Zoho, which is one of the mm. two successful Indian product companies, right? He he's an alumni of uh, Great Lakes, right? Uh, the CMO of Sundra Mutual, he's um, you know an alumni, right? Um, so like that, we have many. Who are, you know, there are people. Uh, there are people at Visa in Singapore and other places. You know, they are all head. You know, they are in marketing roles there. Right. The head of H and M, which is a very consumer brand uh, mm -hmm. for digital marketing. Uh, that's an alum from 2000, I think, 15. Um, right. So there are many of them in senior marketing roles, uh, not just in India but abroad as well. So many, there are people in IKEA in uh, in Stockholm. Yeah. Yeah. So so there are people. It's just that. You know, more people come from a certain background and with higher experience, you get into more into certain kind of roles with that uh, background that people yeah. have. But ultimately, people can aim for what they want, right? And wait for those opportunities to come. That gives great clarity right now. So I'm just moving forward to the last question from the registration bank. Here, the last question is... Um, yeah. What are the skills necessary for candidate to get into management consulting? Your question or mine, Gautam? I, I can take it. I started my career in management consulting. Yeah, so I think you are better. <laughs> yeah. you right. are so, so I went in straight into management consulting after my MBA. Um, right. I think, I think first and foremost, uh, you need very good analytical skills. Hmm. Right. Um, you know, what do consultants do? And, you know, I, I'll, uh, you know, be a little less serious about this, but, you know, you go and tell companies what they can do better, right? Somebody, somebody who's been an expert in that particular industry for 30 years, um, you know, that kind of experience coming to you to get advice. And you may be like, you know, an MBA from a top school with maybe two years of experience, whereas that guy has 30 years of experience, right? So how do you actually like, um, you know, make a case for, uh, yourself the value that you are offering right and that's because and and what you do is basically look at problems and go about uh, you know analyzing them in a very structured manner breaking them into smaller pieces right and then systematically addressing each of them and arriving at a very well thought out of uh, conclusions right that's what most consulting roles are right and mm -hmm. come up with recommendations and so on so what is required is uh, uh, very good analytical skills and a very structured approach, right? So this is one. Second, obviously, you need um, a very good communication skills. A mm -hmm. lot of this work is about communicating with the clients, presentations, reports, and so on, um, right? Uh, in my third year, I was uh, handling uh, board level engagements with like Navratna companies and so on, um, right? So, so obviously, your communication skills have to be good uh, if you have to work at that level. Third. Um, you have to have very good team skills. In many of these cases, you're working on mm -hmm. projects with uh, other team members, different experts in different areas, um, right? And working with the client's team as well, right? So I'd say these are the three main, um, you know, uh, skills that you need to have. Added to that, I think, uh, so uh, adding to the idea of analytical skills, I think is, is what I would kind of broaden to say problem-solving skills, uh, because your ability to think 
uh, a little more abstractly, knowing that there is no one right answer. And this is, I think, one of the common issues with engineers because we are so used to thinking in black and white that you know there is one right answer and there are you know all other answers are wrong. In in management or in business, there is no one right answer. There are just shades of gray, and you got to be able to basically synthesize all the facts and and you know make the best recommendation, knowing that there are other courses of action that could be taken. Your ability to identify which is the best course of action, given the data, given your your subjective uh, insights that you can bring to the table, all of that comes into your judgment. All of these things are very very important. Got it. So uh, moving forward, I'm just going to take the live chat questions. We have uh, a few of those. So the first question is by Nishant. He's asking uh, students who do not come from technical backgrounds, how do you bring them up to speed for this course? So we are admitting people from from all backgrounds, as Gautam said. You know, we are admitting people, you know, who are architects and lawyers and dentists and so on. Uh, so see, the program is structured in such a way that on one hand if you need help with certain types of courses uh, particularly you know if you have you are a non technical person then we have tutorial help we have boot camps uh, you know they you know we will teach you python and coding and all of the, you know uh, r and you know all the different coding methods we will uh, you know give you uh, excel skills uh, all of that is there. If people do not have training in financial accounting, uh, then you know we will, uh, you know, we'll have uh, tutorials for that. So we are basically trying to help our students, uh, you know, come up to speed and and basically acquire the skills. And on top of that, we strongly encourage all students to basically complete some, uh, you know, preliminary coursework before they join. You know, there are plenty of modules available on Coursera and other uh, platforms where you can actually, uh, you know, uh, try to learn some of these concepts, you know, even before coming to the class. So even if you don't understand it fully, just knowing that these are things out there that you need to know is, is always helpful. Gautam? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we have no prerequisite that people need to have any kind of technical skills. Let me remove that. While we may have a lot of students coming from technology background because by default, that's where most of the Indian kids, right? They got into engineering after engineering. Mm -hmm. That's where they get in, right? It's not because Great Lakes chose people with uh, technical skills. We don't, right? So so everybody is welcome and uh, not just, you know, architects and uh, dentists and all. We even had like last year, there was somebody who was a head chef, right? So, so mm -hmm. what technical skills? Of course, he can, you know, whip up a good meal, and impresses classmates but <laughs> there are no skills required right what is uh, and and the skills that really matter during an mba are not any kind of technical skills right as we discussed earlier it's problem solving skills right and problem solving skills can be in many so different ways, right and 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 yeah. you know communication skills team skills right these are the things which matter right it's not the technical skills because post mba you're mm -hmm. not going to work on anything technical you are going to use um, the technical tools but decision making, right? You are not being uh, going to get into coding and things like that, right? You use these tools to get insights and make better decisions. Yeah, you will have others who are going to do all the coding for you. Your yeah. point, your your job is to actually see what are the insights, look at the quality of those insights, and be able to make uh, you know decisions based on that. Got it. So since we are running out of time, I'm going to club in some questions so that I can make it into one. So the question is that uh, one of the students got uh, 80 percentile in ZAT and he didn't score well in CAT. So is there a difference in weightage of CAT and ZAT? And if there is, then please do let us know what it is. And what is the minimum percentile required for a good profile to be a good profile? So as I said, we don't have any hard cutoffs. Um, we mm -hmm. look at overall profiles. So, um, you know, 80s... You know, I would say it's okay. Uh, it is that. I think as long as, you know, uh, things are fine on academics and, you know, if you have uh, work experience, then that matters as well. So I think you can go ahead and apply if you have an 80 percentile, right? Got it. 
uh, one is asking Gautam sir specifically. You have studied an MDI, and I wanted to know that if you have brought in some of the knowledge from there and shaped up the Great Lakes program. Sure. So um, I did uh, bring in some knowledge, but I would not say much because I went to MDI as a fresher, <laughs> right? Uh, you get wiser over the years once you get into the industry. So not specific, but I'll tell you something that we got from MDI and that's a lot of faculty in our Gurgaon campus are ex-MDI, uh, including our doc mm. current director, Dr. Debashit Sanyal. He was my dean academics uh, when I was mm. a student at MDI uh, almost 15 years back. And uh, apart from him, Dr. Ahindra Chakrabarti, Dr. Bhappaditya Mukhopadhyay, he's rated among Mm. The best faculty in, um, you know, statistics and analytics globally, not just in India, mm. right? Um, he's with us now. Um, similarly, there are others. Um, and, and so, so yeah, uh, there was some, let's say, transfer that happened. But, some great uh, points. <laughs> yeah, but I think, I think, yeah, I think uh, uh, that's, that's not because of me. <laughs> <laughs> so the last question I'm going to ask is, sir, is it advisable to go for general MBA program with options for marketing and finance instead of digital analytics program with limited career opportunities? It's not either this or that, right? For example, in our programs, people can take, you know, a marketing also, they can take analytics also, right? Uh, there are courses mm -hmm. in both. It's not, you have to choose one or the other, right? Somebody takes a major in marketing, minor in analytics. Right? I think the question pertains to, you know, uh, taking a certification program in uh, perhaps I'm trying to understand the question, but, you know, maybe it is the choice between a certificate in digital analytics versus mm -hmm. a general management program. Uh, you know, if, if that is the case, then, you know, uh, it's two, two different ideas. But at the same time, I think, uh, you know, it really depends on your goals, uh, you know, it depends on what you want to make with your career and, you know, what are your aspirations and, you know, if uh, down the road you want to get into general management and you actually want to manage teams and so on, uh, perhaps a general management degree makes more sense. If on the other hand, you want to be, you know, quite specialized in analytics and that's really, you know, the only area of focus for you, then, you know, you, you may consider the other option also. But again, like I said, even within the uh, MBA program, we have majors in analytics. So, you, you know, you could actually, uh, you know, benefit from that as well. Okay. And the difference is that in one side, uh, you know, if it's a pure analytics program, the focus may be more on the coding and other aspects. Correct. Whereas at an MBA level, it's about using analytics for decision making, whether Correct. it's in finance or mm -hmm. marketing and so on. Yeah. So on that note, I'm going to, uh, do you guys have anything else that you wanted to share, sir? Okay, so on that note, I'm going to end this webinar. Thank you so much for joining, sir. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much, guys, for watching this. I hope you got many insightful things. And we'll see you for the next webinar. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Sunandri. And uh, wish the best to all the students who are yeah. planning to get into business school this year. Yeah. Wish you all the best of luck. And I look forward to, to welcoming you to campus. It's a beautiful campus, guys. Uh, you know, just come. You'll love it. Thank you so much from Delhi.